third phase of moon. Third phase. Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins here with a special report. We just received a video from Richard Craner. He's given us permission to share it with you. He was flying his drone and he noticed something after reviewing his footage. And we're gonna be looking at it a lot closer tonight in this episode. We have the round table with us with Richard Giordano from Goof On Radio. We got Apollo Asteria coming in from Los Angeles along with Dr. J from Dr. J Radio Live. And we're gonna take it out to Arizona and get Doc Skinner from 1028 Productions and get his opinion of whatever this triangle shaped craft is with multiple anomalies around it. Let's just play Richard Craner's video. He's got a little description and highlights as well. Roll the video. Here we are launching the drone off the truck and as I spin around you will see this object in the back there. That was a bee that just buzzed by. This object I did not see with my own eyes. I did not see this object with the naked eye. This is something that I found in the footage the next day, which is today scrubbing through, and I have no idea what this thing is. It's moving very slow. At first I thought it was a couple blimps or a speck of dust that that bee just buzzed by again, but it's something in the sky uh, at a distance. Now on top of that, there are other objects. There's, I know it's just a little speck, but there, I'll, I'll blow it up in a second and you'll see it maneuver uh, quite radically to the left even uh, after it appears behind this other triangle object. So there it is, bam, and then watch it disappear and then it'll come back and spin off to the left. So it's obviously in and out of the clouds, whatever that thing is. Now on top of that, there's another object uh, flying in formation with the larger triangle. I mean, I don't even know what that is. And of course that other object's there. So you can see that there's multiple objects. I did not notice any of this at first. This is only when I was trying to blow up the image to get a better look at the triangle object or whatever it is. That's when I saw these other two objects. So there's a lot of stuff flying around here, guys, and I don't know what any of it is. Okay, and it's not pixelations. These are these are objects, and uh, it's creepy to me when you see more than just the original triangle. So there we go. All right, I think I figured this out. I took a really good look at this, and. We'll start with the black object. Uh, the black thing looks like it could be square. Up in front of it, to the right, there's an object moving the same exact speed. Then you see other objects looking like they're going into the clouds and darting about. Back to the black object and the object that's going the same speed. That to me looks like an airplane pulling an advertising banner. 100% it looks just like it. The black thing even seems to kind of move like it's being pulled in a way, it's odd, but it looks like it could be one of those banners. Now, Rich, what are the other objects flying around, you ask? You're not gonna like the answer, but most likely it's drones. I can't believe it. It could be drones, could be UFOs. But if you take in, uh, the guy, he didn't see it. And I'll tell you from being a drone operator now, that black dot looking down, depending on what he's using to move the drone around, is he using a small four inch screen or a 10 inch tablet? I don't know. but. Nonetheless, it's hard to see in the daytime your screen, so I believe he didn't see that object there. Okay, this craft to me, I definitely can't really explain it away as being something natural. I, I was thinking, oh, maybe it's a drone, but drones aren't shaped like that. It's shaped like a kite, but I almost wondered, oh, maybe someone lost their kite, like the stream broke and it's floating up. But yeah, I'm not sure if that's likely. Um, I do think it's very possible it could be some sort of craft. And I say this because it's interesting to me, the area it was found in, uh, Ventura, California. 
because off the coast of California, off the coast of Point Doom in Malibu, which is very close to the Ventura area, there is a large underground, what looks like base under the water that is three miles wide. Look it up online, Google it. People have tried to debunk it, but no one's proven what it is yet. It is a three mile wide underwater structure. You can see it from Google Maps. And this has actually even been on the news in LA. Uh, just, just look it up online. It's very interesting. And I actually myself have sat with a friend who lived up higher up on the cliffs in Malibu and watched several, several ships come out across the sky and drop down right around that area. Um, another friend of mine, we, we saw these sort of tractor beam lights coming out of this one ship up in the sky and then drop down into the water one night. So it's interesting to me the area that I was found in. There's definitely a lot of strange activity in that area and I think it might be because of this underwater base. All right, so this video from Ventura, California um, is pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, it's not the first time I've seen this one. There uh, have been several, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But for right now, let's talk about this video in particular. Um, he, what I totally dig is that this was shot with a drone, not just somebody on the ground. So um, it was able to really try to get up to a closer elevation. Now, I personally would love to see a drone go after a UFO. Um, there is footage of UFOs with helicopters, like police helicopters or search helicopters, circling these objects. And I would love to get my hands on some of that footage. So if anybody knows any helicopter pilots that have been involved in a UFO encounter, please send it to us. Um, but this was shot with a drone. He did not see it at the time of filming because uh, it's a drone, so I'm going to guess he had it on his phone, and it's probably outdoors, so unless he had the shade cover on it, it might have been hard to see, because um, the second and third object in the image are very faint, unless you zoom in. Now, the diamond itself, um, you know, could be a few things, could be balloons or whatever, but like I said earlier, I have seen this object since the 90s. Um, started with multiple military projects. And um, we'll get to that in just one second. But on, on this video, you have this object that is going in and out of the clouds to the left of the diamond. That made me realize, okay, there's something going on here. Um, so my th speculational theory and I made that word up I just think speculational I think I, I'm gonna coin that phrase or that word <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I'm I, I have this feeling like it's a drone from the diamond spacecraft and we do know that our military is working with um, dropping drones from other aircraft to to uh, widen their their scope of their missions this is some intriguing footage. First of all, let's start from the skeptic's point of view. We're not talking about debunkers who have an agenda. I'm talking about actually skeptical. What, could, what else could it be aside from calling it a real UFO? Now look at the way it travels and also look at the shape. We're talking about the triangle and the black object. It looks like it could be a kite as far as shape, is it a kite? I doubt it because of how big it is. And the interesting thing is that obviously those two drones that were not na naked to the eye, but are visible through the naked eye, but at the same time exhibited things such as cloaking ability. Why was it caught on camera as opposed to seeing with the naked eye? Well, there's obviously multiple reasons. Obviously, we only see a very limited spectrum of light. This could be outside of the visible spectrum. So many people over the decades have said they've actually filmed things that they couldn't see and all of a sudden appeared there. 
Now also notice the way that the black object tra uh, travels and also notice how the orbs are studying. Now are the little orbs, aka what I like to call drones, are they extraterrestrial drones or are they our drones using ET back engineer technology since we've had craft going back almost 80 years from Cape Girardeau, Missouri, 1941. Also, the smaller objects, I was looking at them thinking, oh, maybe they're birds, but it's weird because you kind of see them and then they disappear. Um, what's interesting to me is the way they zip around. I actually, I, I spent a lot of time going to UFO watches and Joshua Tree and Sedona and places like that. I love to go out to the areas where you can see everything in the sky when it's like way out away from the city lights. And those are great places to do that, by the way. But um, when you can see all the stars like that, it's very easy to see smaller, what looks like stars that will sort of zigzag around. And it's interesting to see those. A, a lot of, I know a lot of people out here watching have probably been to conferences and seen, um, have experienced the laser pointers that you can point up into the sky and watch those zigzag around. Um, it's interesting because the satellites, they actually do not move like that. So they can't be satellites and they are way too high to be satellites. So the way that those smaller objects move around reminds me of that. So that's all I can say on this. Um, I think Ventura is an interesting place for UFO activity, and I do believe it has a lot to do with whatever is under the water six miles out from Point Dam. To the, to the diamond. I love the diamond. Why do I love the diamond? Because the diamond, from all the years I've been doing this, spawns from the Aurora Project, which was a top secret project, and um, it's been around for a long, long time. But there also have been other projects where this diamond has been seen. Um, for example, in uh, uh, over the Freedom Tower in New York in 2011, a huge diamond craft was seen um, over the building. In, two, in, in 2015, you had a sighting in Seattle. In 2016, one in Melbourne, Australia. 2017, Sri Lanka. 2019, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, here in my home state. Um, and then this one that we're watching that's in Ventura, California, here in 2020. So there is a history of this object. Now, um, it, it could be multiple things. It, I'm not saying it's not alien. It, you know, I, I will never be dismissive. It possibly could, but from what I've learned and researched, this could be the Aurora Project or the new Aurora A9. It could be uh, Lockheed Martin's, um, it was a conceptual idea, but it might be reality now, which was the um, Hopeless Diamond Project, and it's shaped as a diamond. Um, and there's many others. There have been uh, satellite images like Google Earth that have captured the new SR-72, which is the predecessor of the SR-71 Blackbird, and it's shaped as a diamond, and it's, it's slick. <laughs> so, there are many possibilities of this object in this video. And, and that's, that's what I, I've come to find and uh, put together for this, uh, for this uh, panel. So that's what I think. But, you know, I could be wrong. Um, but the fact the military is doing this, with, they have aircraft that look like this. And you have to understand that the hovering aspect of it um, they are able to do with certain types of propulsion systems, not necessarily jet, but toroidal energy. Um, so, in anti-gravity and, and all the others. So, um, it's a great video. Great video. I believe it's, it's legit and real because I've seen other videos and photographs um, of the exact same thing. And uh, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, you know, with the big announcement that we had last night, or, or this, or earlier today, I, I hope, uh, I hope we get to see some really cool technology in the coming years. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of ifs with this, but there's a lot of ifs with every UFO video. I believe what we're seeing could be an airplane pulling an advertising banner, 
Could the other little objects be UFOs? It's possible. Could they all be UFOs? Absolutely. But I like to live in a world where UFOs exist and I need the evidence that proves it. And this is halfway there. (laughs) We're halfway there. We got something. We can't explain it. That makes it unidentified. But is it the aliens we want? I don't know. And let me throw in another thing to the mix. Let's just say, for instance, all of this is our, our technology. Why would you want to test it over a city where people live as opposed to the middle of the desert, say Area 51? There's lots of area there where no one's going to be really seeing what you're doing above. One argument for that is people could be testing it in populated cities to see, are people going to see it? Is it going to be caught on radar? I just don't think the military is going to be that clumsy. I'll give you an example, going back to the USS Nimitz. There is no way the military was testing those drones over a two-week period where they would drop from above the sky into these crazy speed. Uh, 26,000, 27,000 miles per hour. Anyway, you don't see that in this footage, but the fact that it's cloaking and the fact that they're around this TR-3B or traditional black UFO triangle, which looks more four-sided than three-sided, but still you can see the triangular shape. It's very fascinating. I'd love to know if other people on the ground caught this and let me throw one other thing in the mix ventura county by the way folks is literally about 30 miles west of here that direction if i happened to be there two days ago i would have absolutely oh god it's always when you want to see something and you were just there but you aren't there we at third phase of moon we've got ufo videos coming in every day and we're sharing it with you let's just roll this take it out to brent he's got some information and a new ufo video right Blake seems like UFOs are on the rise around the world and this just came in from Victoria Australia let's roll it This was captured by David McLean. While he was driving his truck, he managed to pull out his camera and film a UFO. What is this orb in the sky? People may speculate that this could be a drone or a helicopter. We hear no rotor blades from a helicopter itself. Could the truck be making so much noise that we can't hear it? That's a possibility. But whatever this orb is, it's fascinating. What makes this UFO sighting legitimate, in my opinion, is we don't see no FAA lights. Could this be a possible energy orb? We don't know what actually was captured over the night skies in Australia, but maybe other people out there notice the same thing. Send those videos to us. Uh, Brent, thanks for the report. Now take it out to Arizona. Doc Skinner's got another UFO sighting for us. Doc, what do you got? So checking out this video from London, uh, it, I'd be honest with you, when I first saw it, I was like, yay, another dot UFO. But luckily, this guy zoomed in on this object. How bright is on the camera as well. Yeah. Oh, now the trees are in the way. And sometimes you can see more on the camera. What is that? That is not a star. Exactly. That is not a star. Is that another moon? I don't know what that is. Because I was looking at it and I'm looking and I'm thinking that doesn't like no star. It 
looks wow, it looks almost circular like another moon. Are you filming? Yeah. Who would have thought I'd catch something like that? The moon's there. Yeah, exactly. And this thing is just... And it looks circular. It looks hollow in the middle. All I know is it's the Earth. Because you know when you take a picture of the line... I wasn't excited till he zoomed in. When he zoomed in, I'm like, oh, okay. And the reason why is because of when, you, when you're looking at it zoomed in, you see this crescent moon image, okay? With a dark shadow behind it. All right, that gives us some clues about what what this could be. That's telling us that it is close enough in our atmosphere that we're able to see the dark side of it from the fr uh, opposite of the front that's being lit up by the <coughs> sunset. So just like the moon, which is off to the right, we see the, the, the side that is lit up by the sun and we can also see the dark side with a, a slight uh, outline of the shape of the moon. So like the moon, this object has that ability to have that effect. So that's saying it's not a star, okay? So we can eliminate that because it's not far off enough because it would just be all bright white light, okay? Now the other possibilities, someone would say, of course, it's a UFO. Very possible because it's close enough to where you can see behind it, right? So, there's that. I'm going to say it's, it's between a UFO or a very close, small, maybe an, uh, an asteroid or a planet, but it's interesting. It's interesting. Now, what's cool is I hear that Blake, um, he has uh, got testimony, actually, from one of the witnesses uh, just now. So, let's go see what uh, he has to say. I'm interested. Let's check it out. That's right, Doc. Joseph Higgins just reached out to me moments ago. I have his testimony. It's incredible how fast we roll it out and we get the information from the people who shot it. Joseph, what do you got to say about this UFO encounter you had on the side of a UK road? The experience I have with UFOs has been mind boggling. Um, I'm not a person to do, do lots of big edits on videos and I don't know how to do that stuff so the, the videos I've got is very genuine um, and very confusing like the lights I've seen and, and I've seen UFOs lots of times many times in the sky stuff that I can't explain lights that move in a slow way and it just defeats science itself and I've seen stuff in the sky and I've recorded then the next day it's just not there um, on my phone but that when I was recording that time it was there and it was like triangle shaped um, but the stuff I've seen is just unbelievable the testimony comes in from around the world from real eyewitnesses that experience extraordinary things. And speaking of extraordinary, we have Michael Stratt with us with another incredible UFO case files, the historian in aerospace. Michael Stratt, what do you got for us? Blake, it's good to be with you today. Our next case, and I've got the reference works right here, comes from 1960. And this came from the Gray Barker Collection in Clarksburg, West Virginia. References May, June 1969 UFO analysis report. This is the original sketch that came with the report. And uh, here we go. It's uh, 1960. They didn't give an exact date. The time frame is 7.30 p.m. No month given. Mrs. Maxine Hayes and Mrs. Barbara Lewis, they're driving from Stigler, Oklahoma. And uh, they notice some lights approaching their vehicle. Next thing they know, and this is borne out by another report here. This is the Canadian report. They also discussed this as well. Volume two, number six, 1973. 
Next thing they know, a 20 foot diameter dish shaped craft is hovering over their vehicle about 20 feet. It had a series of revolving lights around the outer circumference of the craft. But then what's interesting, the report states that it started lifting their vehicle about 18 inches off the ground. No. The primary eyewitness, she noticed that the speedometer on the car was reading 110 miles an hour. Now this is identical, essentially, to what we see in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So you wonder, what did Stephen know? 30 seconds later, this thing drops itself uh, back onto the ground and she could see that this craft departed near a coal mine and disappeared from the scene. Leave me alone! No! We've done a full color rendering of what this craft actually looks like. This is another illustration by Tom Bogan. So you can see the car being lifted off the ground by about 18 inches. So this is another example of a CE2 case where we have physical effects associated with the UFO sighting. And we'll look forward to see on the next slide. Thank you. Lots of UFO videos just in within the past 24 hours and we've got permission to share them with you right now. And we've got the whole panel with us from Dr. J. Andy Elias from Los Angeles. And we also go out to Arizona with Doc Skinner and Richard Giordano. We're gonna be going over these videos and then we're gonna discuss what we think they are. So let's just get to it. First off, Jorge Nunez captured something over Pueblo, Mexico. Let's roll it. All right, now the whole panel's just seen this incredible video, broad daylight sighting. What the heck is this? Is this a metallic flying saucer in broad daylight? Actually, we see two different craft within the video. Let's start it off at the top. Doc Skinner, what do you think? Well, it's definitely not CGI. It's um, something's there. 
feet and there's another object further up but at first i thought it was a drone okay but my common sense says if you've got a drone it's eventually gonna have to come down and this seems to have been up there for a bit so it, it's a mystery it looks to me like a jack when we were kids and we played jacks before we had electronics and uh it's just hovering there it, it's quite cool you know we've seen the gimbal from uh these navy pilots capturing it in my opinion it almost resembles uh, the gimbal what's your thoughts dr j you know i have to say this is okay first let's talk common sense uh, we'll, we'll rule that out first right the first one the, the one that looks like a fat balloon possibly could be uh you know maybe a new jet of some sort you know you see what looks like wings but it stays there it doesn't kind of move like you know a jet would so i don't know what it's doing is it like a harrier or is it just a balloon but you got the other mylar balloon right that that's one option but i don't really think that's the case that they're too big and if you recall i interviewed cheryl acosta she was the ufo congress uh, researcher of the year winner and when i she she did, does with data deals with data and she told me that the most reported ufos that have been happening for the last several years in all around the world are the large saturn type ufos i don't know what species they represent but the fact that there's two objects in this both of them staying relatively still and moving slightly that is very compelling now as a skydiver i can give you some relativity of height but i don't know how far back they are but since you see one go behind the trees in some sort of way i'd say it's at least 20 feet in diameter from the saturn area maybe more i couldn't tell from the other one it's but it's this is phenomenal footage and their reaction is genuine too and you got cars passing it's great this is this is stuff that makes third phase of the moon the best channel in the world yeah you know it's interesting these broad daylight sightings and it does resemble saturn as you say interesting um with your comparison to the interview you had but doc um uh, richard what do you say to this some people might say these are just hot air balloons but i'm not seeing any kind of basket underneath these uh, uh things that are hovering in the sky what's your thoughts no there is no gondola underneath it so i'm gonna say it's not a hot air balloon although it moves like one relatively slow with the wind, I think. But um, I thought I saw what looked like, and I don't know what I'm seeing. Maybe it's just the clouds interfering, the way the sun's hitting it, I don't know. But it looked like there may have been propellers or something on the top. He zooms in rather closely, one not all the way in, but close enough it looked like there was props on either side of this thing. And then when he backs away, you don't see it anymore. So it may be an illusion that I don't understand yet. Um, sure. I'm going to take a quick picture of it and show a, a very up close shot right oh, okay. now. And we're looking at it and uh, absolutely, we're not seeing a gondola or a basket. Um, I'm not exactly seeing the prop propellers that you're talking about as well. But again, we're looking at this close and it is a very peculiar doc. What do you think? Secret Space Force or, uh, you know, something practical in the sky and somebody pulling a stunt? Um, yeah, I, it could be a blimp, but um even blimps they they have a good it's just it's so still and then the same with the one that's higher up in the air um but you know i have seen blimps that were shaped like ufos at uh you know um hot air balloon festivals and stuff so it's 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 feasible but you would think you'd see the basket hanging below uh a good little bit of a distance below so you have an airspace in between and I just can't see it. Everything else is very prominent, um, but I don't see any propellers. I see where it could be, but I don't. I don't see them as that. So, sure. Well, you know, we've got a lot of videos, so let's just get to this next one. Uh, coming out of Manchester, England, we have permission granted from the Hidden Underbelly, and we're gonna be supplying the original link below in the description. Again, I wanna thank the Hidden Underbelly for getting us this footage out of Manchester, England. Let's just uh, roll it.
All right, we just watched the video and uh, we did a lot of videos in regards to contrails, chemtrails, whatever you wanna call it. But uh, for some reason, we're always getting these orbs that uh, are in the quick proximity to this or uh, within the location of these chemtrails. Is there a relation, Dr. J? What's your thoughts with this? Okay, well, let's go with logic first. First, I'd like to say that the witness did write that you know this lasted for 45 minutes and i wish he had more video i don't know why it was so short on his end um but i appreciate that he wrote that in there and he is by an airport and now recently mars was out here in california you could see it right now this isn't mars it's not red but what's to say that it's not something like that that could it be explainable if it's dusk now most people would like to say chemtrail if they're into that i probably think it's actually contrails but the fact that these lights essentially stayed there and traveled very slowly for four to five minutes and then got weaker and disappeared it's really compelling now remember we have drone technology that can do some amazing stuff now you've probably seen drone shows but i don't think that's the case with these because they seem to be a little too big if however these aren't contrails because contrails tend to disappear fairly quickly. That's why I wish we had the full five minutes. Yeah. Then we, if these UFOs are watching chemtrails, then maybe they're right watching us now to know when Earth screwed up, which is what a lot of people are saying with global warming, if you buy into that. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, it's just bizarre because I get a lot of these videos and then you get these orbs that are uh, within the area. Rich, uh, what's your thoughts on these? Uh, are they just simply birds or drones? Oh, man. And I have a feeling a lot of people aren't going to like what I have to say, but I can only go by experience and seeing these myself. What I liked first, though, and I don't know why it's happening, you don't see the there's two orbs, one on, on top of the chem contrail and one on the bottom. And uh, the one on the bottom, you don't see right away. It takes a few seconds in the video for it to appear. I don't know if it's a balloon, but it may be just getting out of the shadows, maybe of the contrail, whatever. Uh, but they do resemble orbs that people talk about, you know, intelligent craft from who knows where. But I've also seen very similar things in these contrails or in the sky. And for me, I think it might be balloons, but you never know. It's interesting how they are moving the same direction as the plane but it's kind of an illusion because the plane's way out there and these are a lot closer but it's interesting yeah it's very bizarre because when you see these orbs or what whatever they are it seems like they're tracking the airplane could they just be possible other small aircraft military drones like maybe the tic tac that are escorting this uh plane up in uh, about thirty thousand feet doc what do you think doc skinner well uh, <laughs> balloons had to be mentioned. Yes, it could be mylar balloons and they reflect in the sun. Um, and there have been many videos of that, but the fact that they seem to be keeping pace with the plane is intriguing. Um, now on the thing where they're, they're monitoring us, if it's, let's say it, it's our little friends, right? Are they monitoring possibly, uh, Chemtrail, contrail, differences. Contrails, coming from, being from a, a family of pilots, is they dissipate uh, rapidly after the plane goes, whereas chemtrails go on and on. And these seem to be disappearing. So I don't think it's monitoring. I'm gonna have to go with you, sir, and Rich, and say possibly balloons. Well, you never know, you never know. It seems like, there might be some intelligence behind it, but maybe it's just going in the same direction as a plane just because the wind's blowing in that direction. Well, mylar balloons, you know, at certain angles can reflect a lot of light, but when it gets to that side view, it may not be reflecting anything. Right. And so it, it could it, be a tic tac too. It could be a tic tac too. It could it, be two. It, right. It could be two tic tacs monitoring whatever, maybe just the area. I don't think the plane has anything to do with this. I think the plane's just there and it's interesting because we can make some sort of perception of where it might be, uh, if that makes sense. But uh, uh, very, very uh, theologian of you. I, I I'm with you. I'm with you, both of you, because I, I don't think, you know, these have anything to do with the, you know, the plane being there. I think the plane is just relevant to 
where they are, size, things like that. And also because I don't think they're chemtrails. Um, they seem to be calm trails. They should be dissipating fairly quickly. And that's why I wish we had the four to five minutes because we'd see it dissipate completely. And then we, you know, settle the claim, but we can, that's we what I think. That out. Yeah. Yes. It's around. Yeah. Irrelevant. Well, let me bring this up. It's kind of interesting when uh, you look at the video we just looked at a few minutes ago in Pueblo, Mexico. There's these uh, trails, these contrails in the skies as well, all over the place. And maybe there is something going on with these trails and UFOs because in the, these past two videos, you have the trails here and then in uh, Mexico, you got the trails with these two craft. Incredible insight from the panel, and that's why we do these roundtables sometimes, uh, just to get people's opinions of what they think. Obviously, uh, we're humans, and we have different perceptions on what we think is going on in these videos. And I invite you, the people, to leave your comments below and let me know what you think. And I want to thank everybody in the chat joining us today. I've been very respectful in the super chats. It really helps the cause right here at Third Phase of Moon. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. And if you've seen anything incredible, submit it to us right here at Third Phase of Moon. My email is in the description below. Blake Cousins, we'll see you next time.